On First Down, you'll hear interviews with some of the top minds in sports, as well as actionable tips and strategies you can implement into your daily life to become a more effective coach. Let's jump into the content. Today I'm here with Coach Josh Carter. Thanks for coming on, Coach. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me, Justin. Coach Carter and I, we originally got connected. I don't even know if you knew this, Coach, but when I was getting recruited to play college football at Gettysburg College, I also looked at Muhlenberg, and that's where you were at the time. So we've been connected for a little while now. Coach Carter is a 13-year veteran in the college profession. To kick things off, Coach, can you just share with the audience a little bit about your background and how your career has ultimately gone so far? Absolutely. I, I think um, I think I give people a lot of a lot of hope. Um, I, I didn't take the uh, most uh, direct path through, throughout my coaching career. I, I went to a very small high school. I ended up playing playing uh, football and baseball at Muhlenberg College. Um, and I definitely went in as a baseball player, um, developed a passion for football after getting there and getting to experience uh, just what it was like to prepare with people who had a passion for the game. Um, and, you know, as I needed graduation, I let the head coach there, uh, Mike Donnelly, know that in the future, I would love to to get into coaching. Um, at the time, I was pursuing a baseball career, so it didn't happen immediately. And I got my first start there um, as an intern a, a full year after graduation. Um, you know, he had a coach get sick. He needed somebody on short notice, and it worked out that literally days before I had gotten released. <laughs> uh, so my baseball career was over. It was a pretty good time to to figure out the next phase of my life. So I got into I got into coaching. Um, worked worked at some great places at Muhlenberg as as a young intern at Lafayette College and at Fordham University. Um, then then there's the ugly part of coaching that people don't see all the time. Um, the staff got let go at Fordham the year I was there. Um, and, you know, this is where you have to be really smart in terms of not being too prideful, um, reaching out to people. I didn't do that. And I ended up out of the profession for about five years. Um, I, I kind of always kept tabs on what was going on. And, and I, I helped out at some places, you know, in short stints and, and, and worked with some youth in, in different things um, and was blessed enough to get an opportunity again in 2014 back at my alma mater. Um, and, and from there, you know, think things went, went great, ended up there. There's a tremendous program that had been built by Mike Donnelly and now Nate Millen. Um, and, and, you know, we're, we're blessed enough to go to an Elite Eight and a Final Four in 2018 and then 2019. And, and that that opened up some opportunities for me, and I was able to 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 become the head coach at Juniata College. Having this untraditional path, you know, talking about go, going into the profession, but being more of a baseball guy when you were starting, and then transitioning to a part time role, and then you know leaving the profession. What did you learn over that time period, and and how was that experience for you, and how did that help shape your future career? So I think um, I, I believe that, that my time out of it probably um, m- allowed me to be a better coach once I got back in. Um, I was young when I started, as we most of us are, and I didn't really I didn't know what I was doing. Um, I knew the X's. I, I knew how to coach X's and O's, but I, I stunk as a recruiter. I, I like I'll be. I didn't know how to get on the phone and talk to, to parents and talk to kids because it, I wasn't very, you know, I wasn't, a, I wasn't the kid that was recruited that way. So I, I really had no idea how that was going to go. And again, I was a little prideful when I was younger, didn't ask questions. Um, and so, so I was trying to wing it and, and I just didn't do a good enough job. So having to, to transition into sales, <laughs> Um, I, I did have to, I had to talk with people all the time and I didn't have an issue talking with people, but I didn't, you know, my brain was like, why am I calling people? And and that's a huge part of of being a coach. You know, there's the scheme, but you also have to, you're, you're a teacher, you you know, you're a teacher, you're, you're a counselor to your players, to their families. 
um, as they're looking to figure out what's the best institution for them to, to go to to continue their their education and their athletic careers. And so my time my time out of coaching was nice because it, it helped me develop those people skills. It helped me get comfortable talking with people younger than me, with people much older than me from a wide variety of backgrounds. Cause when you, when you're in sales, you don't care who you're selling to. You, you, you want the sale because that's how you live, you know? And, and I was able to transition that back into coaching and, and build those relationships. And so I thought that was, that probably saved my career that, that, that time out of it. Yeah. And that's an interesting point. You bring up the correlation between sales and coaching and recruiting because having a lot of these different conversations, especially during the podcast, what I found is that recruiting is, is really similar to sales. It's, it's just about, you know, transferring that confidence in, in yourself and your belief in your program to that student athlete that you're recruiting. So what, what are your thoughts on that? Like overall, just between sales and, and recruiting? They, they are exactly the same thing. You know, you have to find out what about your product matters and will benefit the recruit so what about your school is going to provide value and benefit and solve a problem for your for, for the person you're talking to which is the recruit in your fan in their family and, and and so you sit there and you find out what are they interested in what matters you know why, why is this important do they even want to go to college and if you know is it that they're afraid is it a money issue what, what what is it that is driving them? And then you essentially counsel them on, hey, this is why my place is a great place for you. And it's the place for you. And, and you said the, the, a big part of it, which is you say it with confidence. When you have that confidence, pe people are attracted to that. They want to be around people who they feel are going to get them where they want to go. Yeah, for sure. And I think having the relationship that we've had over the past couple of years. So Coach Carter, when you were at, when he was at Juniana, he was one of my first customers of Coach Tools a couple of years ago. And and it's cool to, you know, have that relationship because he saw me when I was just getting started off. And, and you know, up until this point, it's, you know, I, I haven't had many people that I've stayed in touch with from the very beginning. So appreciate the time and the, the advice that you've given me along the way. So that's something that, like a theme that can be related to coaching is, as as people are are maybe getting out of playing, coaches need to take an interest in not just or the athlete, but also like what what are they doing as people. Some of my favorite coaches over the years are the guys that I've kept in touch with, and I never had the opportunity to play for you, coach. But I'm sure that would have been a great experience there. No man, you were lucky. <laughs> <laughs> no, you weren't. You weren't lucky. <laughs> and it's not because you didn't get to play for me. It's just because. You didn't get to play at a great place. That that that's yeah. how I feel about it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. No, and I think Centennial Conference football, where Muhlenberg, Juniana, Gettysburg College, where I went to school, you can't really go wrong because every every one of those programs, you get an, a first class education, but you're also going to be playing football at a high level. And I think a lot of the times too, if there's any recruits watching this, a lot of times I feel like kids that are in high school, if they don't go to division one, they feel like they're a failure, but you have to understand, like you were saying, what's the best fit for you and for your family based on your situation. And division three football is, is high level. And you're also going to get a, an, a very elite education from that experience. So. Absolutely. Yeah. You, you can't, the return on investment is key. Um, that's, that's how I look at it. You know, what place are you going to go to that's going to challenge you to be the best version of yourself, you know, on the field and off. And, and I, you know, I think that's the biggest thing. If, if you're a recruit watching this one, go where you want it Two, take full advantage of all the opportunities that the institution gives you, not just on the athletic field, but with internships, with different classes, you're going to have to put a lot of work and a lot of time into it, but you need to do it. You know, I always say that the, the, you don't realize every, every time, you know, you're skipping a class or whatever, you're probably leaving money on the table. You don't even realize it. And if you think yeah. about it that way. Yeah. 
and and this is something I've learned too from just talking with a lot of coaches is like every every opportunity, whether it be go going to class or or going to a, a lift that might be optional during the off season if you're Division three, you know, is is an opportunity for something that you might not even realize. Like for example, as a student athlete, when I was first getting into college, I was actually hurt for my first two seasons, and I stuck with the program. I I found out other ways to help by like filming practice by like writing down play calls on the you know during games things like that and just by sticking with the program a lot of other doors opened up for me from that and I was able to later on get a starting role for my junior season and for my senior season unfortunately that was the COVID year but like you were saying sticking with whatever you start is another really valuable lesson that I've learned Yep, stick, sticking with what you start, and, and you you just don't you never know when when the opportunity is going to present itself. I was not going to play high school football. I played high school football as a complete accident. I had we had free periods at my school during the day, and one day it was the first week of, of classes. Um, had a free period, and and was just out fooling around. Guys were running, throwing, catching. And I did that. I, I played baseball, played basketball. I, I weighed like a hundred pounds. I didn't need to play football. I wasn't trying to die. <laughs> um, well, a, I was a sophomore th- at this point and a kid, he was a JV quarterback at the time, saw me running and catching the ball. And he was like, you're playing. He grabbed me like by the ear, <laughs> dragged me in to the Dean, the Dean's office. Little did I know the Dean was the head football coach. Um, so obviously I tried to avoid the Dean's office and I did a good job. You know, when I did bad things, I, I made sure somebody else got the blame, but I, he dragged me in there and, you know, even though the season already started, he said, yeah, we'll let him, we'll let him come. He has to go through the acclimation and all of that. It ends up being my passion. So yeah, you never, you never know when, when it's going to happen. Yeah, exactly. And, and, you know, that's something too that I've experienced with, with the startup too. When I first got started with this, I was obviously a player at Gettysburg. And the cool thing about it was I was in a class for entrepreneurship and I just thought it would be like a cool, a cool elective as a senior in college, starting to wind down in in the classroom. And this is how I got started with the business is I just said yes to something. And then a few years later, it turned into a, a business where I'm having the opportunity to talk with a lot of coaches and just learn a lot of things that I otherwise would not have learned. Absolutely. You, you know, it's so much fun getting, getting to talk and hear the different perspectives. You know, the coaching community is, is, is great. You hear a lot of different perspectives, There's a lot of ways to skin a cat as people might oh, yeah. say. Any last words of advice coach that you would want to share with the audience today? One, always put forth your maximum effort. Because you never know who's watching. You never know whose eye you're going to catch. Take the chance. Take the risk. Love it. Well, Coach, thank you very much for being on the podcast today. Appreciate you sharing your experiences. And, you know, best of luck this offseason and, and going into the next year. I appreciate it, Justin. Anytime, man. Thanks. <laughs>